Hi folks, I'm Josh and today I'm going to be telling you all the things you need to know about how to create a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition character. Whether that's something you need help with or whether you need the full thing explaining, I'm going to go through what you need and how to do it. Basically, we're starting with this book here. If you have a physical edition or the PDF, then that's all you need for uh, rules-wise. But Tools-wise, I am currently using Roll20.net's uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade official character sheet here. You can do it digitally. There are other character sheets that you can use. There's a PDF form fillable one that I will link in the description if I manage to find it. Or you could just photocopy the character sheet in the back of the book. Feel free to use or adapt any of the ideas I present for you here, because sometimes that can be tricky. Just having a jumping off point is often the hardest part, because we're going to start right here with this core concept for your character. In general, the characters in a vampire, the masquerade game, will be tragic, um, not heroic, and uh, uh, twisted in some sense. Now, that doesn't mean they have to be horrible and monstrous. Getting to that part can be uh, part of your campaign story, but they don't have to start off as, like, the worst of the worst. They don't have to be a criminal. They don't have to be anything. As far as core concepts go, it could be basically anything. So to just start you off with your core concept, take a little time to think about what their job was, whether they had any friends or family and how they interacted with them, and whether they had any vices or problems that they were able to or unable to overcome. My character I'm going to be creating today for you is an ex-cop. Uh, ex in the sense that they died and now live in the vampire world to do justice. I think justice is going to be a core concept of this character, but they could be a conspiracy junkie who got too close to the truth. They could be a normal everyday person who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. One of my favorite core concepts that I've come across, however, is Florence from my vampire campaign that I'm running at the moment. She was a very old homeless lady who had a best friend. She was about to die from the cold and to save her life, he showed mercy, and the only way he knew to do that was to embrace her into kindred society. And this has meant that she's really retained a uh, caring and sympathetic disposition, which is really nice. It, Yeah, like I said, they don't always have to be horrible monsters, although that is always an aspect of a character. Looking for just justice. There we go. Ex-cop looking for justice. And they will be called... Names are literally the hardest part of this. Blaine McCoy. There you go. There's a name. Now on to the fun bit. We get to decide where your character's abilities lie. Now you get to change the amount of dots in each of these groups by uh, spreading out an array of one four dot. I'm going to put these on the screen for you, hopefully. Uh, three attributes at three dots, four attributes at two dots, and one attribute at one dot. And depending on how skilled or useless you want your character to be at different things, for instance, this guy, I think this guy's best will be wits at four dots because he's uh, a witty cop. He's got really quick reactions and the ability to adapt to situations on the fly. However, composure single worst thing about this person is that they will not be able to keep their rag if anyone annoys them. Uh, on, the, on the in-between, I'm going to put stamina at three, because that directly affects my health, and I'm going to put resolve at three, because that directly affects my willpower. You can take either of these things into consideration, whether you want it to be narrative or whether you want it to be uh, mechanical. It either way is valid. I don't mind. It's your character. You do what you want. Uh, dexterity is going to be three, and strength, charisma, manipulation, and intelligence are all going to be two. The next thing we need to do is calculate their willpower and health, which are like 
health bars for your mental and physical attributes. I'm going to fill all this in green because it will look better to my eyes. And then from there to figure out willpower, all you do is add your composure and your resolve dots together. So in this case, Blaine McCoy has four willpower, which to be honest, isn't great. <laughs> he's, uh, he's going to run out of willpower really fast if he gets uh, into a situation where people are attacking him verbally or trying to manipulate him, or if I use willpower to re-roll some dice. That's not going to go well for poor old Blaine. However, health is stamina plus three, which means that Blaine's health is at six. There we go. Uh, ignore the slashes and crosses. They are for marking off the boxes if you've never encountered this before. All you need is an empty box. And now onto skills. Skills are all of these things down here. There are too many to have any dots in all of them, but you can kind of consider exactly what your character was good at in life and what they've learned since, depending on their situation. There are four ways you can go through and figure out where you want to put these dots. On page, where is it? One, four, five. From there onwards, it gives you a rundown of how you can choose your skills in relation to building your character's human life. In their profession, what did they know? For a cop, it would have been firearms and investigation. Or for an artist, it would have been performance or perhaps etiquette. Considering life events, um, what they did in their spare time, can build this character as you see their life playing out. However, if you don't want to do that, if you've got an idea of how their backstory exists already, then just go to page 136, and in the bottom left of the skills, it gives you three different arrays for specialist, which gives you small but high amounts of stuff, or the balanced, which gives you relatively broad but not very high amounts of stuff, and then the jack of all trades, which gives you lots of things but in very low amounts. I will choose for this character the specialist, because this is a character I would love to play as an investigator for paranormal stuff. That sounds like a good time. So, in the specialist array, I get to choose one skill at four, three skills at three, three skills at two, and three skills at one, which means that investigation four. This dude is great at finding stuff. And he was trained. He had a career doing this. I think he's going to be really good at telling how, telling whether people lie, intimidation and streetwise all at three. This is a flat foot cop just beating the streets, doing his job, getting the job done kind of archetype. This is a, a pure stereotypical uh, trench coat wearing cop I'm making here. I've just realized, uh, but three at two, I would probably put that at awareness and a cult because since he's come into kindred life, he's probably spent a little bit of time figuring out what a vampire is. Um, firearms as well, totally a, a police officer because if we're doing an American police officer here, firearms is totally what he would learn. Three skills at one. I'm going to go athletics for running and dodging, uh, stealth for running around and not getting caught, and persuasion for those instances where you need to bend someone's arm, but you like them. <laughs> I'm thinking a character from The Wire here, very good at his job, but has probably been betrayed by the police department in some way. Now, before we move on from skills, you need to pick a specialty. And what that is, is a specific circumstance within a skill that gives your character a plus one dice in a specific situation. Say you want your specialty to be in stealth. You have the option of getting a plus one in crowds if you're hiding in a crowd or if you're following someone or if you are good at hiding in forests so i think for this character i really want to 
do a little bit of min-maxing. Sometimes that's frowned upon, sometimes it's not. But investigation. I just realised you couldn't see my cursor. Anyway, investigation is the one specialty that we get. Investigation and... Because he's a police officer, I'm going to say it's just crime. Investigating crime, whether that's a crime scene or whether you're witnessing someone running away with a person's purse. I don't know. You get to investigate the crime with a plus one in that situation. And it needs to be broad enough that you can apply it to more than one incredibly niche type of role. But... Not so broad that you always get the plus one. You need to kind of make sure that your character is balanced and fair. For instance, you can't just go, I've got the brawl specialty of judo. Because if you narrate that you do a judo move on someone, that will always get you the plus one. And it doesn't kind of specify a situation. Uh, it, It needs to be specific. However, one thing to remember is that I couldn't take a specialty in Brawl at all because I don't have any points in it. So make sure that whatever specialty you have has at least one dot in it. Something I'm also not doing for this character is putting in the free specialties you get. If you have chosen academics, craft, performance or science, you get to choose a specialty for those as well as the free one for any skill. Now onto the fun bit, disciplines. So as yet, I have not made you think about what clan your character needs to be. And this is the point where you definitely need to have decided. So read up on each one what their themes are, what their abilities are, and whether you want to play against or to those types, and then put it in here. This person, I think, will... It seems like this person is a bruja to me because of their need for justice. They were embraced because they had the skills and the determination to go and find justice, but that makes them very angry. So, on your sheet, we need to find their clan bane. And for clan bane, uh, Bruja, it's basically angry. Uh, I believe it makes it more difficult to win a frenzy test. They are angry, and so subtract the dice equal to the bane severity, we'll get onto that later, from any roll to resist frenzying. But it can't go below one dice, because that would be unfair. So, when you're considering your character's clan, either if you have a clan in mind that you want to play, play it, please do. But um, another fun way to think about it is that they were human and then a vampire either picked them or circumstances made it so that they became a vampire for very specific reasons or their sets of skills or their connections within society and that then turn them into the vampire clan that they have. Bear in mind, if you choose Thin Blood, you get some slightly different character creation, um, I want to say options, because as a Thin Blood, you don't get innate disciplines, whereas Bruja get potents. I'm just going to write these in uh, so I remember which ones they are. Presence and what was the other one? Celerity. Lots of fun physical stuff here. And a little bit of social things with the presence. So, Thin Bloods. You don't get any disciplines at all until maybe, possibly, later on. We'll get to you in a minute. All we have to do is decide which of these powers gets two dots and which of these powers gets one dot. I think Celerity 1 will be a lot of fun, because I like dodging bullets. And Presence 2 gives me lots of social options, especially as this character isn't the strongest. So I don't think that supernatural strength would develop within him. Although it could turn up later as kind of a crutch or something, I'm not sure. And another special case is that if you're caitiff, you get to select any two disciplines. It can be literally any. And you get to pick one dot for one and two dots for another. Good luck. And now my single favourite addition to this game, the predator type. This is how you get your blood, whether it is by asking someone for it politely, 
or stealing it from vampires. Maybe even just breaking into someone's house and taking it the old-fashioned way uh, in a very vicious and unfriendly way. So, if you go to page 175, and before I move on, I will remind you, Thin Bloods, you don't get any of this because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's cool, but you don't get it. You can get it later, though, if you're horrible and diablerize a vampire or something, I don't know. Anyway, Predator Types. This character, I'm not sure how he would get his blood. He's a good person. He probably has a family. He probably has someone he can feed from. I think this character is a cleaver. Someone that feeds covertly from their friends and family. So, what we need to do here is take a look at the flavour text and decide how that affects our world that we're creating around this character. And now we have some options to pick to add to our character sheet. I could either take the persuasion specialty or a subterfuge specialty. I don't have any points in persuasion. Sorry, subterfuge. I do have a point in persuasion. So, gaslighting persuasion. Gaslighting, if you don't know what that means, is when you make someone question their perception of things, their reality, and just go, hmm, but did you actually get fed from, and it's a really horrible thing to do to a person. So yeah, that slippery slope down into monsterhood is getting greased with horrible um, uh, abilities. Anyway, <laughs> you do have another option here. If you don't have any points, for instance, if I chose the subterfuge one, I could get the first point in that, instead of taking the specialty. However, I will not, because I want that extra dot in persuasion when I'm doing horrible things to people. <laughs> this is where you get another dot in a discipline, and it can be outside of your clan's specific uh, abilities. So I am a Bruja that gets potence, presence, and celerity. However, as a cleaver, I am skilled in manipulating people or animals or something like that. So I get to choose between dominate or animalism. And I feel like one dot in dominate will be a lot of fun, either getting people to forget memories or getting them to do simple commands by catching their eye and mesmerizing them. That's fun. However, it's not all daisies and superpowers. Uh, we do get a flaw, and this is on a completely different page on this. It should be somewhere on your character sheet. The fl merits and flaws section. I'm going to put uh, flaw. Flaw is dark secret that I am a cleaver because feeding from people is dangerous and might break the masquerade. So having a family that you constantly go back to, that can get risky if anyone finds out, whether on kindred society or human society, that can seriously compromise you in a fun, productive story way. So uh, you take the risks, you reap the rewards, and sometimes it goes wrong. However, we do get the merit heard, which is, uh, I'm gonna put in brackets family, just so it's specific. This herd is a two-dot family, very small group of people that this character is related to and feeds from. And oh, I don't know how he's gonna because he's scared to do it outside. He's he worked for people. He worked for a community as a police officer to keep them safe. However, he's compromising his relationship with his family to do that. Um, in a fun and interesting way. They're probably confused that maybe he's feeding from them at night. I don't know how this character would do that, but let's move on. Now that we have picked which dots our disciplines are in, we can now pick the powers. So for the first level of presence, I am going to have awe, which is an ability to kind of make people like you more. It's fun! And the second dot, I can pick either a level two power or a level one power. You can't have more powers than you have dots, 
But I could pick Daunt, which is the other level 1 power. At level 2, Presence lets you get the Lingering Kiss ability. Whenever you feed from someone, they like it if you choose to do that ability. <laughs> <laughs> and that can real, uh, really get you in trouble or help you a lot. For celerity, I think rapid reflexes because dodging bullets is really useful when you're a relatively uh, squishy and not too combative bruja. That's good. That's one power. That's one dot. And dominate the ability to give commands to people. Making people forget. Uh... Is that what it's called? Forgetful Mind? I'm going to quickly look that up. No, Cloud Memory. Forgetful Mind is a different one. Cloud Memory. All I have to do is look someone in the eye and say forget. And the last five minutes disappear from their mind. It's not perfect. There is a gap in their memory. But everything in this game is a balancing act between usefulness and risk, which is always fun to play out in the story. I just realised I've made a really nice person who was a beat cop and is really interested in solving crimes and justice. However, he has some really horrible abilities. So, <laughs> gonna have to reckon with that particular dichotomy somewhere through the storyline if this ever, if this person ever gets used. I'm very interested, by the way, to uh, see what co character concepts and clans and stuff you're interested in building. So let me know about that in the comments. I also, as we're uh, talking off topic here, realize that I have omitted a couple of parts of character creation and I think I'll go through those in a different video because um, writing up character maps who uh, or relationship maps rather is something you want to do with everyone around the table that you're going to be playing with because relationships and interconnected um, uh, webs of networks of people you know can be more interesting than just going, hey, I know this person, no one else knows them. It's uh, an interesting way to get everyone invested in building the game and the world together. Same with your domain which is something you build as a group. Or you can build, you don't have to do it, but it's recommended that you do. Now, advantages and flaws. You get seven dots of advantages to pick for your character. You also get two dots of flaws. So when you're going through the advantages page list from 179 onwards, make sure that you add up the dots next to each descriptor. And Thin Bloods, finally you get something extra here. You can pick Thin Blood Merits and Flaws. Now, these work differently. They are separate from the seven dots that you get and the seven, uh, the two flaws. Ignore those for the moment. You can have between one and three Thin Blood Flaws and Merits. For each merit, you get one flaw and they can only ever, ever have pairs. So for this character, we're not going to go through them, but just keep that in mind. So as an ex-cop, definitely two points of the seven are going into contacts. Knowing people, knowing people in the community, very useful. And this person is probably going to be a dispatch operator. They're going to hear all the juicy gossip going on, all the emergencies going in and out of their call center. Probably a little bit of resources. Spending money is a real simple way of getting what you want. It doesn't always work, but when you need a thing, having money around can be helpful. However, where does this character's family herd live? It's got to be in a domain, right? So I'm thinking... A uh, house, just a simple, small house. They didn't earn much money, they were a police officer. So I, I can't find where that is, to be honest, in the book. Haven, Haven, that's what it's called. <laughs> and just a really crappy apartment, maybe. Or if I wanted to put two dots, it might be a house. And this can be separate from the Haven you build as a coterie, as a group of players. And finally... Mauler. Now Mauler is a kind of mentor and I'm going to put my final two dots into that 
they are going to be, at that stage, someone relatively important in the vampire world. And I just realized my face was in the way, sorry. That's the real useful stuff your character gets. Flaws, on the other hand, are going to be the death of you, maybe. I think probably going to go with something fun, like known corpse. Everyone thinks this character is dead, apart from their family. That's going to be a real tricky situation to deal with when this dead person arrives back at home. Or, you know, uh, yeah, everyone knows, that th thinks they've dropped off the grid, maybe, but there's a big secret here that can get out that they're actually a vampire. Uh-oh. And then, well, uh, just for the fun of it, because this person obviously needs to end up dead because they've done something silly and ended up what is it bond junkie if any vampires blood bond them they'll really be into it and those are my two flaws <laughs> i've just screwed over my character but that's how it always works you don't want your life as a vampire as a kindred undead person to be easy but conflict is where the story happens so that's fun. Now, touchstones and convictions. These are elements of the world that you get to create and interact with as you play, because a touchstone is a character, a mortal person within the world that represents a value your character holds. So, I think and this is a great way of deciding and solidifying your backstory, that my character is looking for justice because of an ex-con um, who will be called Willy. <laughs> and they were wrongly accused and I was working on this case, um, but I didn't manage to get the evidence. Something was tampered with. They were, um, they were basically set up for it and I was forestalled so I couldn't save them. And I'm looking for justice for them and probably for a few other people, but this is a real issue close to my character's heart. So they represent justice at any cost. That's gonna get my character into trouble. So the considerations with touchstones and convictions is that you can have a maximum of three of them, but no less than one. You have to create a character that links you to your humanity. If you're struggling with this, I suggest thinking up a I will always or I will never or a, a statement along those lines that represents some sort of line that your character will not cross. Uh, there are some real good suggestions if you go to 172 in the book and they will kind of guide you and give you ideas, or you can just take them out of the book. There's probably also going to be a daughter or a son. Um, uh, Florence. <laughs> uh, Florence, who will probably have a represent, never expose children to violence which is something that I just stole out of the book. That connects him to the justice and to the family that he has to feed from. It's going to be a tricky situation. What you also have to think about when you're making touchstones and convictions is the fact that if anything bad happens to these people, your stains on your soul appear and that can affect your humanity rating. Chronicle tenants, just because there's a box here, I'll explain it, are something that you your group and your storyteller all decide together whether you want to take them out of the book, but this is something that you don't have to decide by yourself, so ignore it for the moment. The next bit, really, really simple. Make sure that your humanity is at seven. Everyone starts at seven. Sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down, possibly depending on your predator type, which I should probably write in here. And we're almost done. There are just a couple more things we need to figure out. How old is your vampire? This is something your storyteller will tell you. You either get to be a, 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 child, a childer, a neonate, or an ancillae, which increases the amount of stuff you have to do. I won't go through that because it's fairly self-explanatory. If you go to page 
137 in the book, it will tell you how many ex extra experience points you get, how many extra attributes you get. But basically, these are all things we've done already, apart from the experience spending. And there is a little uh, table on that page that tells you what things cost if you want to spend those experience points. But for the moment, we're going to assume that this character is a Childer, so that is Blood Potency 1, uh, Generation 13, which is probably something I should write here. And if you go to page 216, it will tell you what each Blood Potency level gets you. So there you go. There are all the things for Blood Potency 1. Last, but very much not least, Ambitions and Desires are really important for your long-term goal. Ambition is something you should decide now, as I think this character would be Get Justice for Willy, which is, uh, I should try and be serious, but that is something that is important and a long-term goal for my character. Every time I work towards it, I can heal Willpower damage. Aggravated willpower damage. And that's basically what that does mechanically, but also it's something that I am interested in exploring within the story. So make sure that that covers those bases. And desire? I don't know what is going to happen in the first session of the game, so most likely this is something you can talk to your storyteller about, what you want to do on a short-term basis, and this might change every few sessions or maybe even every session, so I wouldn't worry too much about Desire right now. Burton, there you go. And the Sire, the Sire is probably something your storyteller will probably make for you, or you can explore your relationship in the relationship map, how they feel about you, how you feel about them, and the circumstances surrounding your embrace. And that's your character. I'm probably going to go through the relationship map, the coterie and domain creation in another video. Subscri so subscribe if you want to see that. Hopefully this has helped you. Any questions, just put them in the comments. And if you would like to see me and my friends show you this game and how it's supposed or can be played in real life, then click this link where you will be sent to the Blood Lost campaign that we have been enjoying very much. It's all about thin bloods and horrible things happening. So let me know if you enjoyed that. Catch you next time. Goodbye.